Ball ammo. Ball projectiles date back to the 18th century when smoothbore muskets launched spherical lead balls. The label carried forward into the metallic cartridge era of the late 19th century as armies standardized on non-expanding solid core ammunition. Early self-loading pistols of the 1900-1911 period, including the Colt M1911 and Browning designs favored round nose profiles because they fed more reliably than early cavity-nosed experiments. By 1899, the Hague Declaration pushed combatants away from expanding bullets in interstate war and ball became the shorthand for standard service loads through the 20th century and into the present, visible in designations such as M193 for 5.56 by 45 and Soviet 7.62 by 39 ball. Ball ammo is also a colloquial name for full metal jacket round nose and in American slang hardball for 45 ACP. Rifle ball uses a cantilever, so cases can be crimped firmly limiting setback under automatic cycling. Typical ogive shapes favor reliable feeding over drag reduction. Some rifle ball adopts shallow boat tails to retain velocity. Non-magnetic variants exist for range rules that ban steel jacket projectiles. A typical ball bullet encloses a lead core in a copper or gilding metal jacket that resists deformation at service velocities and reduces barrel fouling. In soft targets, it tends to penetrate in a straight path with little upset, which suits training and compliance with the laws of war, but invites over-penetration concerns in civilian defense. Military forces worldwide continue to issue ball for duty use while civilians buy it primarily as inexpensive range ammunition. It remains the most mass-produced bullet form on Earth. Flatnose Flatnose jacketed pistol bullets coalesced in the late 20th century as a practical variant for the era's indoor range boom and action shooting sports. Designers wanted the feeding security of a jacketed round coupled with a nose that made clean, legible holes on cardboard and paper. The results spread quickly across commercial 9 x 1940 s and and common revolver calibers. Flat nose is also sometimes referred to as FMJ-FN flat point, or simply flat tip. Total metal jacket versions seal the base to reduce airborne lead at indoor ranges. The broad Miplat can shift point of impact slightly lower compared with equal weight round nose, so match shooters sometimes confirm zeros by projectile shape. In tubular magazines, true flat points also reduce primer to bullet contact. The truncated Miplat alters how the projectile meets the target. On paper, it shears a crisp edge that makes scoring easier than a smeared round nose impression, and on steel, it distributes impact differently with a decisive slap. At typical handgun distances, some shooters notice slightly flatter trajectories and consistent group centers compared with similar round nose loads of the same weight. Competitive shooters in USPSA and IDPA embraced those traits, and commercial lines still catalog flat nose options alongside traditional FMJ for bulk practice. Hollow point. Expanding bullets took shape in the late 19th century as express concepts that trimmed nose mass to increase velocity and promote deformation. Around 1890, the British Dum Dum Arsenal developed early controlled expansion service types, the 303 Mark 3T-5 and the 455 Man Stopper, both of which were soon withdrawn from general wartime issue under the 1899 Hague Declaration. Contemporary jacketed hollow points emerged through the 20th century as smokeless powder pressures rose and handguns became standard sidearms. The jacket managed expansion and kept leading in check. More modern polymer-tipped variants retain a cavity beneath the insert. Modern development chases consistency through the FBI protocol. Bear gel heavy clothing wallboard steel glass and plywood each demanding reliable upset without premature breakup. Feed ramp geometry and throated chambers in current pistols markedly improve JHP reliability, and many loads are tuned within Plutz P envelopes to meet barrier targets. The defining feature is a nose cavity backed by tuned jacket geometry. Skive's cavity depth and lead alloy are balanced, 
so the nose mushrooms reliably increasing frontal area and moderating penetration. Many designs bond the core to the jacket to prevent separation after glass or sheet metal. Others use solid copper construction to retain weight across barriers. Match open tip bullets that also have a tiny nose opening exist for manufacturing consistency rather than expansion and belong in a different category. Law enforcement agencies adopted JHPs broadly for duty carried due to terminal consistency and reduced third-party risk, and civilians commonly choose them for defense. Military use remains mission-specific and limited by policy. Soft point. Soft points appeared in the late 19th century to restore terminal deformation after full metal jackets solved fouling but limited upset. Makers left the tip's lead exposed and jacketed the shank an arrangement that allowed controlled mushrooming at the higher velocities of the smokeless era. The pattern matched the needs of hunters as calibers narrowed and speeds increased in the early 20th century. Spitzer soft points keep ballistic efficiency for longer shots while still initiating upset at typical hunting velocities. In tubular magazines, round nose or flat tip soft points remain common to avoid primer ignition. Some designs add flexible polymer inserts that preserve shape in the tube, yet allow rapid nose deformation on impact. The exposed nose initiates expansion, while the jacket preserves structural integrity through bone and dense tissue, producing dependable penetration on deer-sized game and in heavier constructions on larger animals. Variants with dual core structures and graduated jacket thickness appeared as manufacturers tuned behavior for specific impact windows. International humanitarian law kept soft points out of general battlefield service, but they remained common in police revolvers and early defensive rifle offerings before modern JHPs dominated those roles. Production continues across traditional hunting calibers such as 303308 and 30 aught 6 and in revolver cartridges where moderate expansion and straight tracking remain valuable. Semi-Wad Cutter The semi-wad cutter rose in the early 20th century as a hybrid between a round nose and a full wad cutter. It kept a sharp shoulder that cuts a full caliber hole on paper while adding a tapered nose that flies more efficiently and in many firearms feeds more reliably than a flush-faced target bullet. Elmer Keith spent the 1920s-1960s refining wide Miplot SWCs with multiple driving bands and square lube grooves. His advocacy influenced the 357 Magnum's 1935 launch and later the 44 Magnum in 1955 and 41 Magnum in 1964, commonly called SWC. Keith Bullet properly refers to his specific proportions, though the name can be applied loosely. Most SWCs include a crimp groove for a firm roll, crimp stabilizing ignition and preventing creep under recoil in lightweight revolvers. Casters balance hardness with velocity, too hard, risks skidding, too soft, can smear lead. Proper throat diameter and gentle lead angles materially improve accuracy with SWC profiles. Beyond scoring advantage, the geometry matters in tissue. A wide flat me plot with a sharp edge tends to cut rather than smear, and the mass distribution in Keith style slugs promotes deep straight penetration. Bullseye and silhouette shooters favored the accuracy and clean holes, while hand loaders appreciated how the design seals the bore and resists gas blowby when sized correctly. Some semi autos accept specific SWC profiles, but the design's natural home remains the revolver. Commercial cast bullets and modern molds from multiple makers keep the pattern in circulation. Lead Semi Wad Cutter Hollow Point The Lead Semi Wad Cutter Hollow Point descends directly from the target lineage. Start with a semi wad cutter hollow the nose and aim for reliable upset at service pistol velocities. The concept gained particular prominence in the 1970s 990s with the 158 grain plus P38 special round that many departments issued and shooters nicknamed the FBI load. Ammunition houses offered parallel versions, and the pattern became closely associated with duty revolvers of that era. Manufacturers traditionally used relatively soft, sometimes heat-treated lead 
to ensure upset at snub velocities. Powders with fast pressure curves aided consistency. Performance through heavy clothing varies by cavity geometry. Modern powder-coated LSWCHP reduce smoke and leading while preserving the same mass distribution and cutting shoulder that defined the pattern. Retaining the cutting shoulder while adding a cavity produced more disruptive performance than plain round nose lead from short barrels, yet recoil remained manageable in alloy-framed service guns. Agencies that avoided cavity-nosed ammunition for public relations reasons usually stayed with plain semi-wad cutter and saw less effect than departments that issued the hollow-pointed version. The configuration remains popular with modern snub-nose carriers, and boutique manufacturers offer higher velocity renditions that encourage dependable upset even from compact barrels. Commercial availability persists in 38 special and related revolver calibers in both standard pressure and plus P loadings. Hardcast lead. Casting long predates metallic cartridges, but hardcast refers to 20th century lead alloys fortified with antimony and tin to raise Brunel hardness for higher pressure and velocity. As outdoorsmen sought straight line penetration on large animals like bears, Commercial casters and hand loaders combined those alloys with gas checks, correct bullet diameters, and effective lubricants to control, leading in powerful loads. These bullets are simply referred to as hard cast, with shape qualifiers such as Keith style SWC long flat nose or wide flat nose. Gas checked versions wear a small copper cup at the base. Typical alloys range roughly from mid-teens to low-twenties Brunel. Heavier revolver and carbine loads add gas checks to protect the base. Cylinder throats sized larger than grooves favor accuracy with hardcast. Wide maplet designs, often near two-thirds caliber, maximize straight deep tracks without relying on nose deformation. The method does not rely on expansion. A hardcast slug keeps its shape tracks straight through dense tissue and bone and uses a broad meplat to cut a regular wound path. Proper fit to the bore, typically a thousandth over groove diameter, matters as much as absolute hardness for accuracy and clean barrels. Cartridges favored for this role include 357 Magnum 10mm Auto 41 and 44 Magnum 45 Colt and the heavier Casul class revolver rounds. Some polygonal rifled pistols discourage soft lead Yet correctly sized and lubricated hardcast bullets see routine use with satisfactory results among experienced shooters who monitor fouling and pressures. Swaged bullet. Swaging cold forming metal under pressure entered small arms production in the mid 19th century and was widespread by the U.S. Civil War. Period documentation and battlefield finds show pressed and turned projectiles in issue by 1863. As industrial capacity grew through the late 19th and 20th centuries, swaging became the dominant method for uniform handgun bullets and for building jacketed rifle projectiles with swaged cores. Swaged lead wad cutters are usually quite soft, enabling sharp shoulder definition, but preferring modest velocities to avoid barrel leading. Some jacketed projectiles receive a swagged core before a final point-up operation closes the jacket. Tight weight spreads from swaging benefit precision revolver events and short-range pistol disciplines. The workflow extrudes lead into wire, cuts it into slugs, and presses those slugs to final form inside a precision die, bleeding off excess to control weight and diameter. Jackets are drawn in earlier steps, then filled with a swagged core and finished. Cannelures and lubricant come afterward. Because there is no casting shrinkage and fewer voids, swaged bullets exhibit tight weight spreads and smooth surfaces that benefit accuracy. Handloaders use benchtop presses and die sets to make bullets for obsolete bore sizes or to replicate historic dimensions, while major manufacturers rely on multi-step swagging for everything from soft lead wad cutters to modern JHP and JSP families. The technique underpins much of today's commercial ammunition output. Fluted monolithic bullet. In 2014, Lehigh Defense introduced the Extreme Penetrator 
a solid copper handgun bullet with helical flutes at the nose. That geometry catalyzed a family by 2016 included Lehigh's Extreme Defense Polycase Inceptors ARX G9's external hollow point and later offerings such as Norma's NXD and hybrid designs from larger brands. Agency and lab testing in the late 2010s documented consistent behavior through soft media and common barriers moving the concept into general awareness. Often grouped under fluted bullets, these bullets include Lehigh Defense's Extreme Defense and Extreme Penetrator ARX's Polycase and Norma's NXD to name a few. Monolithic bodies can reduce bearing surface moderating pressure and aiding extraction in hot environments. Nose geometry varies by maker flute pitch depth and land width, tune fluid redirection and penetration windows. Some policies classify these as non-expanding solids, which simplifies adoption where expanding ammunition faces administrative restrictions. Rather than mushroom, the flutes redirect fluid laterally generating pressure differentials that tear tissue while the shank retains a constant frontal area. With no pedals to peel or bonding interfaces to fail, shot-to-shot -shot behavior is notably more consistent than that of hollow points, and the monolithic copper construction resists deformation after hitting glass or sheet metal. Performance scales strongly with impact speed. Faster cartridges such as 357 SIG or plus P 9mm loads generate larger cavities in test gel than slower, heavier entries of the same family. Offerings now span the common semi-auto calibers and command a premium over lead-core JHPs because of material and machining costs. Adoption varies by policy, with some users favoring barrier reliability and others weighing urban over-penetration risk. Frangible bullets Frangible ammunition has a lineage that reaches to the early 1900s when amusement park galleries used specialized 22 short loads to limit ricochet on steel targets. Trade names such as Spatterless, Kant Splash, and Spatterproof appeared on boxes of the period. During the Second World War, the U.S. Army Air Forces issued the M22 in 30 caliber for aerial gunnery training against armored RP-63 flying target aircraft a light round whose flight mimicked ball without piercing plates. Late war Germany manufactured sintered bullets in 9 by 198 by 33 and 7.92 by 57 as part of material conserving programs. In the early 2000s, polymer bonded tungsten and copper cores entered US 556 initiatives as part of lead reduction efforts. Range programs specify minimum standoff distances and certified steel hardness to prevent splash. Rifle frangibles often carry explicit velocity ceilings on steel. Lighter fast frangibles can print a different zero than ball ammo, so instructors typically confirm sights per load. Brittle noses also favor gentle magazine loading and feed ramps. The unifying idea is behavior on hard surfaces. Frangible bullets are engineered to shatter into dust or tiny fragments on steel or masonry, drastically reducing backsplash and secondary hazards in shoot houses and on close steel. In soft media, they can behave more like conventional solids. Bone and glass can initiate breakup. Manufacturers form them with powdered metal bound by heat and pressure, or with polymer matrices. Field use occupies distinct niches. Military and law enforcement training on steel at close distance shipboard, and aircraft contexts where pass-throughs could damage structure and civilian indoor ranges. Some frangible hollow-point designs aim to reduce chances of exiting a human-sized target in dense housing. Handling calls for reasonable care because aggressive crimping or rough feed ramps can chip brittle noses, contemporary loads have improved durability, and commercial catalogs list frangible options in common pistol and rifle calibers. If you found information in this video useful, give it a thumbs up, share it with others interested in firearms history, and subscribe to catch future content. Have a subject you'd like covered? Leave it in the comments. Thanks for watching.